All right, today we're gonna knock out getting the power set up. I'll update you on how I pulled some of the wires, where I pulled them to and why I pulled them that way. And then we'll make the final connections. Uh, you'll see it power up and uh, I'll essentially give you a rundown on the operation real quick. So what you see in front of you is the factory harness. It's a little um, discombobulated because I had it connected to a um, power source in the house and was doing some programming with it. Uh, just pulled it out to give you a rundown on some changes. What you see here is typically what you're going to have in any of the um, setups for amateur radio and it's these glass fuses. This one happens to be a 15 amp fuse. They fuse the negative and the positive and uh, I typically will get rid of these glass fuses because they're not standard in a mobile capacity. So you can buy these um, these guys right here off of Amazon and have yourself a, a nice kit of fuse holders. You just cut the loop uh, right in the middle and then splice it in. Um, really you're only making one connection to the, uh, the cable itself and then the other one gets a ring terminal put on it and goes straight to the battery. This allows you to use a more standard blade style fuse of any any size that you want and I feel that's just a little little better in a mobile environment. These are also uh, water resistant um, with the rubber caps whereas these are not. Um, so I typically get rid of those and just move on to a more modern setup. Hopefully the lighting's not too bad in here. I uh, wanted to give you a quick rundown on what uh, wiring I did. So I want to come up with a uh, kind of a safe central place in this vehicle uh, to have any ex excess wire. I don't want all the wire in the glove box with the radio. I want just enough to pull the radio out, in and out, disconnect it, do what I need to do so that I have the glove box freed up for maps and other things that I want to keep in there. So each one of these wires has a terminal on it that I don't want to have to duplicate. So as we step back, you can see I've got that guy. I've got that terminal, which then takes an adapter to a um, SO259. And then here's my speaker. So I can't just cut those to length and make them the exact length that I want. I need to pull them into a safe place where they won't get hung up on anything and then uh, secure them with zip ties. So the way I did that was I'm gonna do it in the very center of the console because this vehicle is essentially a doom buggy that um, if you leave anything loose, it'll end up falling down and getting in the wheel well somewhere. Um, if you can see this here, basically everything's just kind of, wiring is loose all over the place in the wheel wells of this thing. So you need to have it all pulled tight. Um, I took these other wires up over the glove box and over the upper cross member in the back there. So there's an upper cross member or like kind of a, a more distant cross member back here. So I've got all the, the two wires um, over here on top of it and then they go to the center console. And then let me show you what I ended up doing with the speaker. So speaker mounted right in here. And then a uh, hole was drilled just to the left of it and routed that speaker wire up. I'm not co too concerned about the speaker getting wet. It's just not a big deal with uh, speakers typically. Um, so you want that in an easy to hear spot um, and that's not gonna hit my knee or anything in that location. I've already checked. So we should be good to go. All right, I will get, uh, get the power set up show you how to make a couple of the connections with the power and then we'll be ready to roll. Okay, when making connectors, I wanted to talk about the type of connectors that I prefer to use. Um, many, 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 many years ago, uh, I put myself through my first stint in college doing uh, car audio and car alarm installs uh, back in the early 90s. And we always did crimps. There was a competing shop that did everything solder, and that was like their claim to fame that they solder everything, they didn't use any power tools on the car, and they really sold themselves as a high-end audio place. 
um, and to make a point about how careful they are they didn't use power tools on the car so like they didn't use any kind of a power screwdriver or anything they did everything by hand I thought that was all kind of a silly gimmick um, I'm not really into uh, soldering stuff unless I have to uh, we found that the connections stayed together perfectly fine with crimps nowadays the crimps also have a heat shrink uh, outer cover on them and they have specialized tools you can do to get those crimps just right. Uh, so it's really nice to be able to use one of these tools. It's like a ratcheting tool to make sure you get a full crimp on everything. It is designed for each size by color. And then you hit that uh, crimp with a heat gun and it just kind of shrinks down the outer casing of it. So this little guy here gets crimped in a couple places and then the outer casing will shrink and basically glue itself to the wire. I think this is just the most fantastic way to do stuff. You have all your ring terminals. In this kit, a few more uh, butt splice crimps. And in this one, it's all butt splices. Uh, so you can get both these from Amazon. You can get them as a kit with the tool. And then I've got a couple tools to show you for stripping wire. So to get the insulation off, you can either use this guy, which kind of is okay. Um, I don't find it as reliable. Uh, that's from GB. I don't find it as reliable as this item from Ideal. This one is, uh, you have to put it in the right place to get the crimp correctly done. Or not the crimp, but the, uh, the uh, wire stripper correctly working. But this is like 100%. It always works uh, as long as you have it in the right place. This one likes to just kind of slide off here and there. Um, but both of them are really nice. Much better than using a standard one where you're trying to pinch it in like a set of pliers that has a little hole cut out of it. So we will get these uh, pieces cut off, spliced, and heat shrinked. While I'm at it, I should show you the uh, cutters that I use. Um, so four different pair of cutters here. They might all be different brands. This guy is the old school one. It's a Klein. So this is the one, a set that I used back in the 90s um, that I used in the shop and they've had forever. Uh, I did damage the cutter up front there, cutting stuff that I shouldn't cut. But these Klein ones are the best ones I've ever had. I got these guys. Uh, they don't cut so well. Not super impressed, so would not recommend the GB cutters. This is another set of Kleins. This is kind of the newer set of Kleins, and they're just not the same as the old Kleins. They're a little stiff. Uh, there's more of a gap in the crimper. The crimper's a little tighter on this side. Um, and then these guys were from Milwaukee. And they're okay. Nothing special. I would get the Kleins um, out of these three. Even the newer Kleins are better than the Milwaukee, I think. Um, so definitely track down the Kleins. That's typically what I cut with. If, if the wire gets bigger, I'll use a set of Klein uh, lineman pliers. You can see I've also jacked those cutters up too. But those are your options for being able to cut wire pretty easily. Also, coming from my days of uh, doing car audio and um, especially security systems, we always wrapped our wires. You always wanted to disguise what the wires were. So if somebody looked underneath, they couldn't easily see the color of the wire and start cutting things to disable the alarm. Um, so you can just take electrical tape. So these two were loose, um, separate from each other. Take electrical tape and essentially wind it all the way as far as you want to go with it. Of course, you can take loom, which then protects the wire. So the plastic split loom or like a coil, um, curly Q, Q loom is very good to use. Um, this vehicle is not a whole lot of steel and not any sheet metal. Um, so I'm not too concerned about the, the wiring getting cut. Uh, it's all plastic that it's gonna go through. 
so I'm not going to sweat it when it comes to uh, putting loom over it. In the truck, I will typically loom uh, anything in the engine compartment, protects it from heat, and uh, if you start getting abrasions on the wires, it'll keep you from cutting through. But uh, this is pretty typical on the electrical stuff that I do. I will wind it in electrical tape, and then when you're all done, you just uh, break it loose. You're good to go. Here's a particular grommet I'm going to use. Here's the particular grommet I'm going to use on this application. Uh, so these are uh, like a split grommet, I guess you could say. So you would cut this with the razor blade and then pass your wires through. Uh, other grommets would be a circle, like a donut with a hollow hole in the middle. That's made more to protect the wire from abrasion against the sheet metal. This one's made for water intrusion. So if you cut your slit in there, you can do two slits, pass all your wires through, and you got a little bit of a tight area there. On top of that, you can fill the area with silicone. It will be totally watertight at that point. Um, and this is for the glove box because of the way that I'm routing the wires on this application. So I want to keep the glove box totally watertight. So I'm going to use one of these, pass the wires through, and then after I uh, verify everything's working, I'll go ahead and glue it or uh, silicone it up as well. There's a shot of that one inch grommet installed. Uh, you just drill a one inch hole and a couple slits in it. I can now pass my wires through with uh, relative security for uh, water integrity in there. Okay, there we go. All my wires are passed through. They're all kind of a similar length. I might throw a zip tie around those um, just to bundle them together. And it's just enough room to pull the radio out, disconnect it, and do what I need to do inside that area. I've got these loops left over here, so I will secure them up in this safe area, and uh, we should be good to go. I've got my power wire routed out to the battery, and we will secure that a couple times uh, right in this area, and then I will separate the positive negative, install my um, fuses and do my final connections plug everything in and we'll be working okay when making my final connection I select my ring terminals strip my wire insert those guys in you want to use the smallest terminal for the wire size that you can actually get to fit and then grab your crimpers Select the correct size for the crimp. Knock out your crimp there. Once you do that, grab your heat gun and just watch that so they can get it in a place where you can see it. And essentially you've got a waterproof connection at that point. Everything is melted down, secured, ready to go on the battery. Uh, no need to solder and I've found that they're very, um, the longevity on them is very very good. All right let's do a final walkthrough of the install. You see the power is all hooked up here, power and ground. Uh, you've got your two fuse holders which are waterproof. And get the hood back on. Get your antenna in place there. Way up on that mount on the frame rail. Hop inside this guy. We've got our head unit up here. Connect it down to our actual radio that's in the glove box. And if I choose to uh, keep it operational while I'm out and about, I can just close the mic in there and use that guy there. One of the things I wanted to recommend was these nifty manuals. Uh, they're nice because you can throw them in your glove box. And uh, 
it is just super easy to flip through and find what you're trying to look for uh, inside the manual as opposed to the great big uh, paper manual. This is also uh, water resistant, so if it gets wet, uh, hanging around. Um, there we have it. Right now, what you just heard up there was a uh, uh, repeater out of Moab. Uh, we are, geez, a couple hundred miles from Moab at this point. Uh, it's the first time I've heard that uh, repeater activate. Um, let me go ahead and, if I can remember how, I think it was over here. We're going to turn the scan off and go back to my home channels. All right, so hopefully you can get a view of that. So these are memory channels that are programmed in. So I have a two meter call. This is all ham stuff. Uh, I like to assign um, alphanumeric names to them rather than frequencies, just because I find it easier. Uh, two meter adventure and uh, 70 centimeter calling. And then we have different repeaters. So each one of these repeaters is within 60 miles of me as we go through. Um, and you're going to see star ones are linked repeaters that are all together. Um, as we scroll through here, you will see a ton of repeaters. And I was not joking when I said thousands of repeaters are available for amateur radio operators. So this just gives you an idea of how many repeaters are out there and I can almost guarantee you I can hop on any one of these and get a response if I was in the area. I've got some monitoring frequencies in here and then GMRS frequencies are in here for emergency use. And then you can uh, manually roll through your frequencies as well. So I'll give you a rundown on that Surecom power meter. I'll show you how that works. It seems no matter where I put this, I can't get a good picture of it with no glare. But in the top right hand corner you see the wattage and in the middle you will have the SWR. This is that Surecom power meter. Um, what I was trying to show here is that you don't need to buy a super expensive um, antenna analyzer like I showed you earlier. You can actually use your radio to power these uh, tests. So let's take a quick look. I've got this on a VHF simplex frequency and when we key up K6HOL testing you see the wattage and the SWR. SWR is basically perfect at this point. Um, now the leftover wattage, I'm not sure why it's showing that, but it is showing the frequency and how much power is going out to the antenna, which is 99.999%. And let me key up one more time and you'll see that full wattage of the radio. K6HOL testing. So that was 48 watts forward and virtually nothing reflected back into the radio. And this, the only thing you have to have besides the Surecom is a simple jumper and you can test your uh, SWR on your radio. So uh, there you go.